So I would um, like to welcome everyone to Zoom at noon. My name is Natasha Ritzman. I'm the director of the Shingothi Center. I would like to thank you for joining us for our third and final artist and curator and conversation program this semester. Before we get started, I'd like to mention a couple of housekeeping items. We will be recording this session and we'll post the recording on our virtual experiences page on our website. If you want to ensure that you do not appear on the recording, please turn off your video now. We also ask that everyone stay muted during the conversation. Please feel free to type in any questions on chat at any time during the presentation and we will share the questions at the end of the program during the question and answer session. I'd like to thank Laura Santoyo for handling the logistical and technical aspects of this program. I would also like to thank Doug Stapleton, the Associate Curator of Art at the Illinois State Museum for bringing the Figurism exhibition to the Shingothi Center and for facilitating this conversation. Thanks also goes out to James Cow, the Professor of Art at Aurora University who is joining us for this conversation. Finally, I am thrilled to welcome Frank Trinkina to this program. We are honored to have Frank join us today so we can learn more about his art and practice. And without further ado, I'll turn things over to Doug so he can formally introduce Frank. All right, thanks everyone. Uh, good to see you. And uh, let's go ahead and share screen if we can, right? All right, let me try that here and get this. Okay, is that, are you seeing that piece up there? Okay, great. So this is uh, the third conversation with artists that are in the Figurism exhibition there at the Shingothi Center. And today we're talking with Frank Trinkina, who is a painter uh, of long standing here in Chicago. Um, whose piece lineup is on the screen now from our uh, museum's collection. Uh, and Frank is, um, so we'll talk a little bit more as we talk about his work, but um, is a Chicago native and uh, graduate of local institutions here. We went to the School of the Art Institute for um, undergraduate, correct, Frank? And- uh, 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 For graduate, yeah. For graduate, graduate, okay. And, um, is a um, uh, uh, professor at uh, um, North uh, um, Northern, Northern Illinois, Illinois University in DeKalb. I always have to remember all my different universities. There's a lot of and North. North. The North, the North, uh, Northern Illinois University uh, for quite a while now. How long have oh. you been teaching with uh, at uh, NIU? Uh, about 25 years. Yeah. And his work, what we're going to introduce here is, um, uh, fits into the idea of the figurism exhibition, which was looking at the idea of the sort of narrative and kind of fantastic figure, that idea of a, of a figure that is not just purely representational, but moves into the realm of experience, of emotion, of a kind of like social, emotional, environmental impact. And uh, Frank's work fits beautifully within that, um, for me, felt uh, beautifully within that idea of the exhibition. Um, his work through the years has involved what has um, been described as uh, sort of tableaus or um, scenes or tableaus in which sort of familiar objects, things that he's collected and objects from like daily life are recombined in these ways that uh, set up a narrative uh, that have suggestions of uh, like a psychological space and also have a suggestion of an emotional space. And um, these are two earlier pieces from 2001, Misstep and Hammered, uh, that uh, actually I had Frank in an exhibition about 2006 at the Illinois State Museum. Uh, we had, uh, I believe one of these pieces or both of them in the exhibition, I think just one of them. And um, which set up this, uh, we'll talk about later, um, this idea of a, a cinematic quality you know, something pulled from a movie or a Pulp Fiction kind of feel. So there's something uh, liter literal and literate about them, like they're telling a story. Um, but Frank also has this relationship to the figure, which is uh, starts to border on the, the hybrid, the grotesque, uh, this um, 
sense of almost the monstrous, the real and the unreal, as in uh, Music for Relaxation and Superhero Pothead Number 2. He's also particularly known for these, with, I talked about these tableau settings, sort of set up on this uh, kind of shallow stage. Um, they have a theatricality to them, both, both from their um, extreme lighting and also from their arrangement of um, their arrangement across the scene as if they were a study, as if they were a choreographed moment. And, um, and oftentimes they're involving these objects, which are really like the things that you would find in a, a gift shop, in a thrift store, in a, a tourist trap somewhere along the highway. They kind of step back into time, they step out into popular culture, and they um, step into the ironic and the humorous, as well as the dark and unsettling. And he's also got this formal relationship with his work uh, to this idea of a history of kind of still life presentation. Um, about the formal arrangements on a flat surface, which is kind of what painting is about uh, and art is about, but also that relationship to the real, to our experience of the real and how we want to be able to like reach out and perhaps grasp or pull that or experience that with our um, both with our physical senses as well as our, our memories, our thoughts, our, our emotions. And the, uh, to sort of start off this conversation, go into that piece that was on the, on the left, which is called pictures, what are they? And this is sort of a detail of that. Um, with that brief, brief introduction, Frank, I wanted to ask you the first question, pictures, what are they? Uh, where you are now as a painter, as an artist, where does this all sit for you? With, uh, uh, image making. What's going on? Take it away. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think this piece seems to have a, uh, you know, I, I, I appreciate you putting it up because it really is a, uh, brings together many of the things I've, I've been interested in and um, exploring for, as you said, quite a while now. Um, the you know, the pictures, what are they, was, is a page out of um, these mid-century um, books about painting. Um, and I, I know you want to keep this long, so I won't go too long about it. But, you, you know, yeah, it, it, the interesting thing is that maybe it's, it refers to an idea of like certainty or uncertainty. And, you know, and, and it's an interest, you know, maybe in the context of our world today, it's, it's interesting because there was kind of a mid-century confidence, you know, and even in the modern, high modernism where, you know, here this, they, they're telling you what a picture is, you know, and, you know, I don't know who can actually really say what a picture is, but um, so this day, you know, this page I was fascinated with and, um, you know, I, I, I just couldn't get away from, from it and, in I, you know, I just, I wanted to paint it. Um, and also, you know, going back to, I think with lineup, which is in the show, and I had had some conversations with Doug, it, it, you know, the photo, but they, you know, there's no face kind and people ask me, well, why, why isn't there a face? And I'm like, why does there need to be a face? You know, so, uh, um, and also the other reference in this painting is kind of also uh, maybe a, a um, uh, I don't know, it's not, a, not really a self-portrait necessarily, but a, uh, a referral to kind of my life in some ways in terms of um, being a still life painter, very crazy too, um, this kind of kitschy guy sitting on a uh, I don't know, leaning his hands and, and, and what's interesting, what fascinated me about that too is, you know, as a still life painter, I'm staring at things for hours and hours and hours and hours. And, and I think for a general population, that might just seem like the craziest thing to do. I mean, why should I? I still do. So I think, you know, that, you know, this room, so, you know, this area is also uh, a sense of exploration and discovery in terms of, you know, 
what you can find out about what you're, you know, the, the things you're painting and exploring. Well, your work, and I'm going to move forward here a little bit as well, too, and start to talk about historical references. Um, you're an observational painter as well as this narrative painter. And I think this idea of staring is really important and this idea about what is real and what isn't. Um, so thinking about Frank's work, I mean, it, and it has, um, and it perhaps it's perhaps not the, um, the, the critical aspect of it, of the, of the work, it, how it operates uh, as an image, how it operates as a vehicle for communication uh, might easily be um, dismissed by it's sort of like, you know, kitschy or sort of the idea of the tchotchkes or the objects within it, but there's something much deeper. It's a deeper relationship to history uh, of art making. Um, I brought these two examples, uh, this uh, Zubaran painting from the uh, 17th century and then from the early uh, um, 19th century, uh, Raphael Peel, which is dealing with this idea of trompe l'oeil, this, this, this realism. Uh, and Zubaran on the left, which is a devotional object made to feel like it is coming off the wall so we can experience it in real time. Peel taking that and moving it into a little bit more of irony. Uh, with this cloth pinned up over top of a nude of Venus rising from the sea uh, as a kind of, um, you know, covering for modesty. Um, and then within your own work, dealing with this idea of observation, like you were saying, like, why spend these hours staring at something? And when we look at something long enough to give it consideration, do we give it importance? Um, and I wonder with like this body of work that you were doing in the mid part of the 2000s, where we were looking at cloth and palettes and the sort of objects from your um, studio, um, you were moving them into, you know, the realm of a Zubaran, but with a little bit of the irony of appeal, you know, um, a sort of look at the history and a reverence for it, as well as a bit of tongue in cheek. Um, so what do you have to say about that, Mr. Drukina? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, it's funny. I think in the, I mean, they're both very beautiful paintings. The, the, the uh, peel, it, I see a face there. You know, I know you'll talk about it a little, little further up, but, uh, you know, uh, one of profound influence on me was my mentor and professor, Ray Yoshida, and close friend. And... You know, the funny thing, we could always find faces and everything, you know. <laughs> you know, maybe that happens too when you stare at something for a real long time. But I think at this point, you know, the going back to this body of work is there was a real, you know, I'm, I've always been fascinated about the, um, you know, when you spend so many, 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 many hours doing something, you know, there's a self-referential thing about being a painter, you know, and, and what the stuff of painting, and then you're in questioning it, what, what it really is. And doing paintings of paintings, you know, I, I, I've, I've, you know, people, you know, I do many studies, which I, we really include here, but I do often do uh, have piles of uh, paintings uh, that I do of, of my own paintings. And it was always, it's a way to, you know, kind of self-analyze in a way. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, this one is actually interesting enough, like you, you, on the left is called Shroud. So I was interested that you showed the Zuber on this. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, we had talked about that too. We had the show. I mean, just that idea of the veil of Veronica, like this canvas, this cloth with an impression on it. It's almost like this in, image of the idea of an image. Um, and I put this John Haberly, who was a later 19th century painter, uh, you know, for anybody who's not in, uh, familiar with that uh, American history of uh, art history of, of Trump Loy, of Fool the Eye painting. It's a really fascinating uh, history. And it also had a bit of social commentary to it as well. Uh, but I wanted to move forward because you mentioned Ray Yoshida and I put this piece in here, a piece that you did in honor of Ray. Um, uh, very briefly, Ray Yoshida is a part of a, a generation of artists sort of referred to as that Chicago Imagist school or a Chicago Imagist idea. And he was a real profound influence on you. Um, there's a, I think there's, um, get back to, where I was. 
Yeah, there's a picture of Ray there in front of one of the, um, what was that influence that Ray had on you? Well, it's, you know, I, I, I would say that it's very complex. Like I said, it was, a, it, it had many levels and, um, and it was, it was unique. I mean, there was nothing like it. I, I don't, you know, you go through art school and, you know, and I hope I'm not that way as a professor, but there can be, you know, you can sum up maybe some of your teachers of, you know, maybe you could say, oh, they were a little formal or they were a little more conceptual or something. I mean, Ray could not be summed up mm -hmm. really. It was, it was very hard it, unless you were somebody that hated him, you know, and not everybody, you know, had, you know, connected with him and he didn't, I, he didn't, he didn't mind that. That wasn't an, an issue with him. Um, but this painting, you know, but it, you know, before he died, before he, when he was sick, I said, you know, I said, Ray, I would like if I do an homage painting to you. And, you know, you never knew what Ray was going to really say because he would think and then answer. you know that you know i like i i like that idea and i said i want to borrow some things so um you know he, he is if you if some of you don't know ray another aspect that really i think was extraordinary and in, in historical is he was a one of the important collectors you know especially of outsider art but of all kinds of things so i picked these two things out and especially one of his hula girls and Ray looked at me and he said, you have to give it back. And, you know, I've, I've always felt so bad because I never had the chance to give it back. But, and he never had a chance to see this painting. But, um, yeah, any, that's anecdotal. But, you know, it's, uh, anyway, yeah. But he did have that relationship to collecting and sort of popular yeah. culture, as many of the other artists within the Images group did. Well, yeah, and of course, that's something we really shared passionately. Mm -hmm. I mean, we collected together for many years. Different things, of course, but um, yeah. And what really uh, uh, kind of was, a, including Ray, was this relationship to a figure that was like what, I think it was Jim Ute had said, was this body under pressure. Um, a figure, a look at the figure in which like the elements of it are, um, these are two examples of Ray's uh, collages that formally create the structure of a figure, but then are so inventive and are also deal with this idea of, uh, of um, you know, what's, what's the normative, what's the correct, uh, the correct way to represent a body. Uh, they read in a certain way, but they're completely unsettling. And I really think that, you know, where I think perspective, how conversation with a figure in Chicago, uh, the same way you have these hybrid forms, um, like with the piece on the left, or the way you compositionally work with Horizon that you know, we see in, in Yoshida, also see in Christina Ramberg and other artists, um, you know, these very clear visual formal structures that are reiterated that support this idea of the figure as something um, You know, again, that is under putting out something for us to experience. So the one on the left was old painter or oval <laughs> portrait, and uh, the other one, <laughs> uh, anonymous. Um, so let's, yeah, and then you have here Super Hero on 13 left and Meat Face. And we talked about that a little bit too, like where you take elements and uh, this hybrid figure, you know, let's talk about this idea of the hybrid figure. Um, and um, let's talk about that, Frank. What do you think about, so how are building this idea of a figure? Or well, I, you know, I, I, I was thinking about that because, uh, you know, of, of course, the this show, spectacular show, I mean, I, I have to say I'm honored to be in the company of so many 
people that uh, you know that are in the figurism show that um, inspired and that re I I really respect. Um, I you know I guess I could say you know that thinking of my own um, development uh, and journey, I you know I I really was somebody who went to my figure classes and I I was passionate about the figure. I mean I really you know, the figure was everything, you know, and I, I really wanted to pursue that even further out of school. And then, you know, the realities of, um, you know, working directly from a figure were more difficult. So anyway, I guess my point is that, the, um, you know, I, I just kind of um, moved towards uh, still life in a way. Um, and but you know i guess in a way they're hybrids i guess yeah you know they're they're i always i always want them to assert that they're still a still life you know they're not they don't they don't i don't expect that to somebody to think that that's um they're not objects they're not physical um you know so i i i keep going for me that's those those go hand in hand that, that, that it's not I don't expect that you know in in going and just in terms of process or something like that I, I could never and it's not such a purist thing but I could never as an artist it's not satisfying to work from a photograph for me it, it just doesn't there, there's something on set I have to experience things physically and that's um, but the, the superhero, again, a lot of it is physical, is arranging things, and I love arranging things and putting things in different places, and that's part of the pro process. Um, but the painting on the left, uh, you know, that's a Barbie head on the bottom, like the Barbie, you know, uh, hairstyle head. And oh. that, and the top part is actually a Michael Jackson mask. Um, so, and it had this great hair, you know, so it's, it's really weird. And the, the, actually the face looks very strange too, but uh, I just love this, the, the way the hair was. Um, and maybe people have pointed out, maybe there's a, you know, there was a little Christina Ramberg kind of in there a little bit too, who I also love. Well, there's uh, in that push pull between object and that it's sort of compositional like makeup, you know, the face, but then going back to the, the steak, the hot dog, the drumstick, the wig, the individual elements, how we're pushed back and forth between big picture and detail, which is something that you see like in Jim Nutt's work, for example, you see these, you know, really kind of exquisite uh, compositions formally and sort of technically, and then you get pulled into the sort of gory detail, you know. Uh, the sort of messiness, the, the 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 mustard and the meat and the sense of like dirty hair and all of that, you know. So how we get pulled into the senses, into the real world, and pulled back into composition. I think that's the strength of your work in, in many ways, like with these two pieces. Um, and we talked earlier today too about um, uh, Sue Ellen Roca and that same idea about push pull. Uh, you both have. We're, we're all, we're friends with her and uh, admired her greatly. And she had a different relationship than, um, but she had the same sort of relationship to push pull, like with this piece, 11 ladies are waiting. I just wanted to throw that in there because when I look at meat face, I see 11 ladies are waiting because I see that same idea about how we move into a kind of macro micro relationship, like the overall body here, but then there's a face that's larger here and how these, borders or boundaries move in and out of each other. Um, and also um, moving into some other works, more recent work as well too, you have a relationship to, um, we talked about with the still life about, uh, you have this whole relationship to mediated culture, you know, movies, uh, pulp fiction, toys, you know, um, yeah, uh, probably television as well too. We are, we're children of that time period. And um, your work to me carries on this sort of sensibility of sort of the film noir of the 30s and 40s of a gothic tradition, quite, you know, literally in this portrait of Dorian Gray. And also the idea of pulp fiction, that kind of, kind of underworld, seedy, cheesy, sleazy, wonderful stories of people, like this discussion here with this 
I guess a guy in like a baseball suit and and then her <laughs> and then Mr. <laughs> was it Mr. Mr. Hamburger hot dog down there. And there's just a whole sense of like, I see this whole sense of like, you know, dynamics, human dynamics played out that feel really compromised. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so what do you want to say about that? Just like that relationship to those, you know, well, those ideas. Uh -huh. I, yeah, I mean, I, I He's know. He's a tough we, cookie. We were talking about, uh, I know we, in our discussions, you had mentioned film noir and, you know, that kind of hit me in the head a little bit because since the lockdown, I mean, I'm usually, I, I, I love, you know, I love opera and theater and I, and, and, and lately with this lockdown, I've probably been seeing, watching way too many noirs, you know, uh, but, you know, they're always have powerful, um, you know, for me, they're just, they always pull me um, into them, but, um, yeah, there, there, again, there's different levels. I think with the Dorian Gray, you know, <laughs> there's a face there, I guess you might see too with the windows and the yeah. red red carpet, you know. Uh, uh, but, <laughs> you know, I, I think, so. you know, with the old paint, I, you know, these, I think there were just different levels and I, I have no problem. I think you rightly said um, earlier about, you know, using literature and being literate sometimes. And, you know, I, I, these stories like the, the old painter is based on the uh, 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 Edgar Allan Poe story, the oval portrait, um, and this oh, is, God. and this is um, the the Oscar uh, Wilde Dorian Gray, yes, yeah. right, which has a strong Chicago connection with the uh, with the uh, Albright. Right, I you know as a kid I as a kid I just always stare at the, Al, the Ivan Albright mm -hmm. and. The, The thing that with Ivan Albright though is he that's the painting book you know that's of the painting and I wanted it's not really of Dorian Gray himself and there's really you know so I wanted to really capture that because you know it's got that overall universal kind of thing of um, you know of art and mortality you know this Faustian mm -hmm. thing so you know this was more probably a more of an elaborate setup and I used for Dorian I used uh, Backstreet Boys body um, and it's a uh, Blatz man, Blatz man, like an old uh, <laughs> beer, beer, um, what do you call them? Like a, uh, you know, for a beer advertising um, mm -hmm. head. Uh, you know, because I, you know, there's a, there, I, I kept, you know, he, um, he's bubbly. He's a bubbly figure, not, you know, the, the, the movies and, uh, you know, and he's actually blonde and in the movies they make him, he's kind of a mm -hmm. fun guy, you know? So, um, you know, so anyway, I, that was kind of the exploration in mm -hmm. that. Okay. And this and, was just to, this is just to prove how, um, how, uh, Gothic these oh, are, you know, film noir they are. <laughs> wow, they, they look pretty good that way. I, I know, I, don't they? I never yeah. thought of that. <laughs> well, I was thinking about your relationship to also to your love of opera and theater. I mean, because that also moves into this. I mean, the high drama of these pieces, like viewings within it, but also as if it was happening in real life as well too. Um, and I'm gonna move forward because again, and I hope you don't mind that I sort of referred to your work as had a sleazy quality to it because I think that's really- <laughs> Hey, wait, my mom and sister might be watching. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right, it's okay. No, uh, no, because there is that, there is that- um, they it's sound. not about the sensual, it's like, <laughs> not even about the erotic, it's really about there's this quality of kind of like the disturbing, you know, behind, behind this. I think this artisan model on the right is just a hilarious image, uh, but also speaks about some other sort of dynamics as well too, but it's really kind of like, this is a mall out of like, a, you know, a 40s crime drama, you know, uh, or the piece on the left, which is a much earlier piece, Creamed, you know, as this kind of reference word, you know, creamed as being killed, you know, knocked out, but in this case being killed with cock. Um, and all the people standing around just staring like, 
what happened here? I'm not responsible. I didn't do anything. Um, the absurd and the sort of dangerous playing off of each other, which you just do a lot in your work, which is just really kind of wonderful. Um, so what, what do you think about that? What are, what are all these relationships to like the ironic and the absurd and then the sort of dangerous and the sort of like kind of uh, slightly, you know, titillating? How do you put all this together, Frank? <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe it's just, it was a development, <laughs> it was a development of my, you know, my journey because, um, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's difficult, you know, also as an educator, because um, my, my undergraduate experience, uh, which people of a certain age would understand was, was with many high modernists when I studied, um, it, you know, abstract painters, um, primarily, and um, there was a degree in those who aren't as familiar with that period. We're talking, you know, uh, many artists and painters who were educated in the 1950s and 60s, you know, they had, it was, it, high formalism was the reigning thing, and it tended to be very serious. It was, there was a serious aspect, you know, and, and, and today maybe abstraction, the newer abstraction, maybe it's a little more lighthearted, but you know, in the era of, you know, and there was serious times maybe then too, but in the time of um, Franz Klein and every, you know, the, those, you know, there's very, so anyway, my, I guess my development was in a way a reaction to that. And that's why the other part of my journey when I, when I um, you know, arrived at the Art Institute, and, and of course, they were completely irreverent to modernism from an early time. Um, and, I, and it was a liberation for me, you know, and also, you know, that, that kind of undermining of this, you know, you know, I'm not saying my paintings aren't serious. Of course, there's, there's seriousness, um, but there's also, you know, a, you know, Ray and I would talk, spend many hours talking about play, you know, the idea of play um, mm -hmm. and, and, and the idea of possibilities within painting because painting, you know, and this has happened at times over the, you know, the many, <laughs> many, many years of the, the, the history of painting, you know, there's like all these, you know, sort of rules and all these sort of like, you know, manifestos or, you know, and of course they make it, and it, they make it interesting to study our history, of, I think, but, but really when you're in the studio, it's, it's, there's an intimation that kind of goes beyond that, you know, and when you're putting this thing and that thing together, and you know, and this, this thing and that thing that don't belong together necessarily, you create something new in my eyes, you know, and then, you know, again, this, you know, this, uh, this the cream painting, you know, could be a joke, but it's also a serious thing. Like, you know, I, uh, in, I remember every kind of thing I'm doing in, when I'm painting these things and I painting that space on the wall uh, just was, you know, I, I could look at it completely formally as well. You know, it really was, um, I was just taken by the light on the wall as well. Um, and you know, I, you know, I, I, John Harnett, you know, when he hangs stuff on the wall, there's a history of these still life painters where they hang things on the wall. Um, and I was thinking, you know, combining the wall and the shelf, and um, and again, you know, there maybe there's a kind of joke, and so that cream painting is related to the hammer painting. I, I call that that kind of group of paintings, or if you would, a series. There's several are missed up. They're, they were like the tragedies, you know, they were kind of tra sense of tragedy. Um, and the painting on the right, um, which is a little more recent, was in one of uh, my second to last show in Japan. That, that, that kind of refers again, and you know, there's all these backward refers to, you know, there's all these artists and model, so many of them, and he always had some model kind of patiently sitting there some kind of way, which to me, you know, seemed kind of goofy in some ways, but also seemed kind of interesting. And um, so there, that was kind of the development. Um, 
and kind of going back to, you know, your point when, when you had Dorian Gray or referring to Gotha, it's, you know, it's like, you know, I've hit myself, you know, being a mature painter, I've, you know, at times I've hit myself in more recent years and say, say to myself, why am I not painting pretty paintings? You know, why, why shouldn't I be painting flowers? Why shouldn't I be painting a nice scene or something? And I don't know if, how I could answer that. You know, it, it, you know, I, you know, again, I think that intimation in the studio to me takes precedent. Mm -hmm. Well, it's something, to, and I, I would say, because I think you have a relationship to the unsettling, you know, to the uncanny, you know, there is a, you're, you're constantly looking for that moment that is, that is, you know, your subjects, the things you're using are these kind of cute or trite or quaint objects of daily culture, or popular culture, but you're putting them into these, you know, operatic moments, which um, unsettle us like the, like, discussion or, or artist and model or creamed. And you were talking about play, and I think that's really essential. Um, I mean, that idea of play behavior in anthropology is how we overcome obstacle. And the idea of clowning as a tradition, as a sacred tradition, is one of like pointing to the, the problems of society, how you mirror or mock or, or reference or, or point out in a, in a way that's kind of biting or satirical about what it is, is, um, you know, is maybe particularly wrong with contemporary society. So I think all those are what keep your, your work and make your work very serious, I mean, serious play in my mind. And, um, and that's one of the things that we talked about as well too, and with this piece line up, which again, we're showing here again, that's in our collection. And then these next two pieces uh, identity crisis and mistaken identity. This idea about identity, because like you had mentioned, you, you know how to paint the figure, you've done figurative work, you've done portraits, but you use this subject, you know, these, these found, you know, inanimate objects as your cast of characters. And, and they come with their own, you know, built-in stiff, you know, stuck in time identity or, or quality. How do you then translate that into like these larger, like kind of emotional narratives, these larger themes and stories? Like, what is it that you do to make these come alive for us? Well, I, you know, I think it, um, again, it's something I believe in, in is that, that my job is to present some questions. You know, I don't, you know, I don't think art is about, you know, presenting answers, you know, these, I think it's questions like, you know, questioning what is identity, what, you know, it's like, how do we sort these out, you know, and my collecting has always, you know, played that, played a big role, you know, and you pick these things up, you know, and, and you say, well, you know, somebody had to think of making that thing. You know, <laughs> and you're like, you know, and that's fascinating to me. Somebody thought, oh, I'm going to make this, you know, this fish face thing, or I'm going to make this pineapple head. I mean, there's like this, and you know, and, and I also, you know, like, for instance, with mistaken identity, you know, there's, you know, what, it, again, when some, when a head's missing, what is identity, you know, and I, that, and that goes, I think, kind of back to lineup as well. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think those are questions, um, you know, and that's, you know, it's kind of a culture, cultural anthropology, in a way, because you're, you're like, kind of look, looking at these things, you're like wondering, and, you know, uh, it's, it's just a curiosity, and I'm interested in curiosity, you know, it's, uh, you know, Ray always used to say, you know, what's important in, in art, which I, again, I, I really believe in is, um, is the, the particular and the peculiar, you know, so, you know, everything is like particular, like, you know, I don't think it could have been a different, you know, uh, headless football guy on the right you know i mean it, it, you know there's something that ha was particular about choosing that 
you know, for me, you're like, you know, people like look at it and say, what the hell is it with like all these people with no heads, you know? <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I think that those kind of things intrigue me and keep, you know, I think in the end, you have to keep yourself in your work. You know, you do, you know, it's, it's not about convincing everyone. It's just convincing yourself and convince, mm-hmm. you know, that's one person you have to convince. Maybe a second person, if it's a person who ends up buying it, you know, but, mm-hmm. you know, that I don't, I don't think it's like a, you know, you're making some big uh, public relations um, statement when you're making a piece of art, you know, <laughs> so, um, but it's, a, it's a, the idea of identity is like, very interesting to me and you know where, you know where these things come from and stuff and like recently i'm going through my collection and i've known this over the years but you know uh, uh Kong or or um from japan then then now they're like mostly made in china but they tend to always make caucasian and I'm like, what? You know, why are they always like, you know, it's, it, you know, is there some reason for that? I don't know. But again, it's the question that I'm, I, I think I assert with it, not, I, I can't come up with an answer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I wanted to bring us to these newer pieces as well, too. Um, doctors on the left and nurses and doctors. These are watercolors on paper. Um, and of course, they have, you know, speak to the time now. Um, but they're one of they're haunting pieces for me because they really feel like pieces of, of you know stage, they feel like dance you know a choreography, and I know these figures are probably just as you found them, but um, yeah, what was um, talk about these a little bit? Well, <laughs> I think you know like all of us, not, you know, around the world, you know, once the lockdown, uh, you know, art comes, I think, often from as a practical matter in terms of where you're at. And of course, as a teacher, I'm, I'm every day aware of that as, as well. But, um, you know, when the, you know, when this catastrophic thing happened to us, and there was a lockdown, and, you know, I, it, it, you know, it's just part of my DNA, but the, immediately, my thing is, Like, how am I going to make art, you know, if I can't go to my studio? Um, and, you know, of course, there's always this, I, I believe there's always a solution to everything. You know, I, I, I love getting, I do projects in my studio and I love um, finding some way to make, I don't know, a shelf work better or something because I build all these shelves. Um, but uh, anyway, but the th- point is I, I did set up a, a water-based, uh, water, uh, you know, based paint studio in my small living quarters and you know I think I, I've had these doctors and I've had these nurses for some time and they've appeared in different um, you know these things appear in different paintings at different times but um, you know of course I'm like looking at them and I'm saying whoa uh, this is now and um, mm-hmm. I did you know make their masks I made lots of masks and I even have some things in the works with with masks, but you know, I didn't really want it to just be about the mask. And, um, you know, it's, uh, yeah, I, so there's kind of a series of these in my house that I, I'm working on with, along with other, lots, lots of water, water, you know, and it's, and it's also on another level is like, you know, really trying to learn how to use watercolor because watercolor is really, really hard. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, I think it's really much harder than oil paint. Um, and I, I, you know, I like to challenge myself and I like to learn something new and I never want to do, like, I never want to use the same color the same way all the time. And I never want to use the same brush or kinds of brushes all the time. And, and so for me, it's been, a real discovery. I don't know. I mean, this is literally the first time any of this <laughs> work is, uh, you know, been besides uh, a few close, close friends, you know, who've actually seen them. So, um, but it is, it's also, you know, the relationship between them. And of course, you know, it's, it, it's all, 
you know, I think at one hand it's, it's disturbing, but it also, because of our time and the situation, but it's also the humanity. I mean, the humanity is, is extraordinary, mm-hmm. you know? Right. Well, I think that's just, these pieces really point to something that's really important in your work or a, a, a strong point is this idea how we can read into um, the, the, the allowance for us to read ourselves into the moment. And so just this idea of figure in the ground, it's just this, they're either facing back into a void or there are three figures on the left, which are sort of looking in different directions. The idea they're looking outward into not at us, not out of a stage, but into this sort of vast emptiness. Uh, and in a particular pr- moment that we're in right now with the coronavirus is this idea of the unknown. And so, and it's just that hands ready. There's just something very poignant about that, which like I say reminds me of like a choreographed gesture, uh, a, a very specific movement and sort of patterning of bodies to relay a strong message. So I think these are brilliant. You know. yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, that's really, yeah, that's, extremely well um, pointed out and, and, and definitely along, along the lines. And I would add just to, to, to with the theme of, you know, going back to the theme of identity is, you know, you know, the masks. I mean, you know, I've always, you know, I've always wondered why our identity is so focused on our faces. I know it's, there's a million ways to explain that, but, you know, but now with the mask on, you know, it's like, uh, and especially, you know, not to go into something about uh, everything going on today, but I mean, you know, somebody who's in a bed or in, in a hospital and the person, the only people you're seeing, you can't see their faces, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. you know, so, uh, you know, yeah, there's a lot of, and it is a lot about the unknown, I think as well. Mm-hmm. Well, to sort of wrap up what I wanted to talk about too, I just wanted to say like, you know, we talked about like the imagist and um, you know and earlier painters, but I think Frank, your work fits in so well with other artists. I mean, if we were going to do a dream show, you know, it'd be include people like Phyllis Bramson, in the lower left, or Tony Phillips, Mary Lou Zelazny, Ryan Travis Christian, other artists who are working with this idea of narrative figure that involve these. You know, I like that. I like that comment. That idea of the the particular and the peculiar you know, the, the familiar and the strange and that relationship. Um, so that was just my point is I wanted to place you in a way that how I sort of see you in a larger, in a, in a, in a context with peers, uh, you know, people that are come before you and who are been students of yours who have continued to work. Um, and I wanted to leave this fly, final image as we ride off into the sunset a uh, cowboy painting <laughs> to, you know, also open it up for questions at this point or closing statements from you, Frank, or James, I'm sorry, if you had, um, I, um, if you have a question there, the comments that you want to make as well too, but uh, to open up this point to sort of ask if there are questions or other things you want to address at this point. Um, uh, this is what from 2018 cowboy painting by Frank Trankina. Um, anything else you want to say, Frank? Uh, no, I, I'm happy to have some questions. I mean, this yeah. was in a recent show. Um, one of let's my most recent show in Japan, and um, and it's been kind of it's interesting. I guess I would just briefly say, you know, my relationship has been so interesting um, with. Um, in that context. And, um, you know, this painting started many years ago and was kind of abandoned. And then uh, my, the gallerist, the uh, Megumi, um, did a studio visit from Japan. And he, um, he said, he said he wanted to have the painting. And I, in I guess in, in an overall sense, um, one thing I, to, another interest of mine that, but it's, I think, again, it ties into identity is just like the sense of, you know, all, you know, there's all sorts of cultures in the world and there's multiculturalism and all, you know, and I'm not going to get into some kind of heavy theory or anything like that, but it, but there is, there definitely is a worldwide overall popular culture. And in, in two minutes, it translates anywhere in the world. And, you know, if you, if you show a cowboy painting in Japan, then, 
it just clicks, you know, everybody understands it, you know. So, I mean, it's just, I, it's a fascinating thing, you know, uh, they're, the, the popular, world popular culture really doesn't change a lot anymore from place to place. You know, it's like, there are things that people all over the world can, you know, can click with and they can understand it to some degree. So to, that's a fascination. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think your arc also deals with stereotypes of like, you know, masculine stereotypes, like how they get played out by these figures, um, you know, just, uh, and you know, there's just, there's a whole w range of ways that we can look at your work and talk about your work, you know, from the, the previous history of the figures and how they, you know, what they represent and all of that. But um, are there questions or? Yeah, comments? we actually just had a question come in. Um, okay. Antha, she says, hi, Frank, I'm curious to know more about what play looks like in the studio for you. How do you play and what keeps your studio practice fresh and engaging for you? Uh, well, that's, that's great. Cause I, I feel like you know, not feel, I know that's part of the process of, of making art. Like I, I, you know, what I always try to, to relate to my students fervently is that you're an artist before you're a painter. You're an artist before you're a sculptor. You're an artist before you're a photographer. So that means that you know, I don't just sit down at my easel and like paint, like, you know, my, my art making start, you know, starts when I find things, when I pick things up, when I arrange them. So there, you know, and as I'm getting older, it's really great that I'm moving around a lot, you know, so it, it's a physical thing, you know, that uh, to, to move these things around. Um, and again, part of play, I think is, you know, uh, you know, we kind of lose it as we get you know, get older, you know, or more mature in some ways, but we, it's the possibility that one thing can go with another, you know, you know, when you're, you're young, you can say, oh, I can put this on top of that, or I can, you, you know, put that next to this, you know, um, I think maybe that's, hopefully that's answering the question somewhat. It's definitely part of the process, you know, it, it's, uh, um, you know, and, and, and part of play is, is liberating it's part of a liberation, you know, to be able to, to play, I think it is, you know, yeah, it's important. It's, it's important to the process. Yes. James, as a painter. We have, yeah. <laughs> we have one from James. Um, thanking Doug um, and Frank for this conversation. And then um, he says, I think I may have spied a self-portrait and the reflection of one of the watercolors. Can you talk more about these watercolors in general? I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Is that down here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. I was looking at that too. His face is everywhere. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think that's a that's a good to point that out because <laughs> it is it's on a glass table. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was a, a family table. Um, yeah, the watercolors, like I said, I am really I, I'm a student in some ways. You know, I'm I'm really I, I I'm really trying to to go for take them further, and sometimes I maybe I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do with them. But um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's fascinating because I, I want to learn something when I'm doing them. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. they, they uh, go, go ahead, James. Well, Frank, these are stunning to me. They're, they're, you know, all of the work is like, you know, observational. So, so is this, but, but, but there's just like a heightened sense of like, like like reality to the, to this work, like you know, it, it, even the way it almost looks realer and it definitely feels realer. Um, uh, there, there's a, the Belgian artist Michael Boromans, but he's painting from photos. There's there's some similarity to to to, to that, but there, there's I I love this work. I, you know, I'm not I, I don't have my head wrapped around it yet, but it's mm -hmm. it's like, this is amazing. You know, <laughs> thank you, thank you, James. I I. I may, I think, yeah, I mean, that's again, right? I, like trying to, I appreciate it. Cause like I said, not really anybody's seen any of these, but it's, 
yeah, it, now you have, and it's great. Um, I, I, yeah, I don't know. It's maybe it's like that white, the paper, the white of the paper, having to struggle with the white of the paper, the where, where the light's coming from. You know what I mean? It's somehow like doing so many oil paintings over the years. I kind of know where the light's coming from, but I, when I'm making these, I don't exactly know where the, and I mean the light from the the surface, not the light that's, you know, and. You know. And it also like just just to talk shop for a second. It, it you know it seems like it's a different kind of light than in your studio, like it's a cooler light. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, because yeah, because I can't I, I I I have to use paint in a different way somehow. I it's it's it, it yeah it's it's struggle, but I feel like I'm learning a little more. You know, I'm trying to learn. Um, and yeah, shop talk. I mean, I've been juicing it up with gum arabic you know i mean i've been doing things like uh traditional watercolors would be slapping me around right now of course <laughs> at the other other end of it i i am hyperly as people that know me pretty well as i'm 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 never to the point where i'm going to do something on archive non-archival you know but um if, if i could just say a couple more things like i've, I've always loved like you know like the, the paintings of like the you know like the like the paper, you know, where you're painting posters or, 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 or signs or postcards. And, and I've always been like, it's like, you know, when, when you paint representationally, we always talk about like painting gravity or, or painting the weight. And it's only like, you know, after looking at, at a Frank painting, dude, that we know that how heavy paper is. But, but the, these paintings somehow like, all of that's there, but, but the, the figures are also very light. Like, you know, they're heavy and light at the, at the same time. And, I don't know, Frank, man. These are just kick-ass paintings. I, 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 I can't wait to see them in person, honestly. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's all, and it's, God, I, I, coming from you, James, that's, that's amazing. Thank you. I, they, you know, it, it's, a, it also was, a, I think maybe some of the glass table um, is mm -hmm. kind of making me, I, I don't like to use the word loose so much, but it, maybe it's kind of, um, and, and, and I'm kind of coming back to the, this glass table because my family had these wrought iron tables that I used to play under in the glass. And I was always like just fascinated about how the glass is a surface, but it's not, it's like water. It's like, it's, it's not, it's a thing, but it's not a thing. It's a, you know, so it's hard to get your, your hands around that. Hmm. Other questions, Laura, or is that? Um, that's all that was entered in the chat, but I'd like to remind folks too that you have the ability to unmute yourselves. So if you'd like to ask a question now, you're welcome to. Yeah. Or pop them in the chat. That's fine too. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got a surprise. That was a surprise bonus. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, James. I appreciate it. You know that. Uh, well, th thanks to you and, and Doug. This has been this is a great talk. Well, thank you. I, I, I well, I, I love both of your work. So it's not, it's a pr privilege to, to me. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm grateful. And you know, they, I hope I, I hope I shared some ideas about the show as well because I really, um, you know, can't wait to see it. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Frank, and yeah. thank you, James, Natasha, Laura. It's been a pleasure. It's always a pleasure talking to you, Frank, about your work. <laughs> And you, and you got my family in here too. That I know. I know. It's a bonus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, see, there's always play. We, we, we always, there's play going on. So, you know, uh -huh. yeah. And James, I, 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 your idea, the, 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 um, you know, the, the table thing is, you know, I'm actually thinking about that again, the glass table idea. So I, I, the, the, those watercolors are stunning, Frank. I mean, they're, it's like a whole, like, they're just, I mean, they're just, they're like just fresh air. They're amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you were doing studies of your window as well, too, completely different um, of your apartment, too, right, Frank? At night, you were yeah, doing. Yeah, I have, I have, 
dozens of paintings in my, my windows, but that, you know, I don't know, you know, I think we all, I, I know you guys, uh, people understand that we all have these different groups of work. So, um, mm -hmm. but I, I don't know what, you know, people, uh, you know, I don't know what context they'll ever be seen. You know, mm -hmm. I did show, but I did, I have to say, and I think, I think Yarun is in here somewhere, or he was, um, but I, um, you know, uh, my Swiss, the show I just had in Switzerland, they actually did show uh, my, many of these window studies I'm doing side by side with a few uh, paintings that you did, you, you, that re weren't on, that you didn't show today, but okay. um, except, for, mm -hmm. except for the cat painting. But anyway, that was interesting because they did discuss, um, they, I had questions in the, the talk I did there in mm -hmm. uh, Lucerne. Yeah. Well, good. Well, I think we've had our hit our hour point here, so we should probably right. wrap this up. Unless there's another question, somebody. Um, I don't think so. Just a comment. Okay. Um, the perspective of the watercolor on the left feels like fresh, um, fresh. Go oh, sorry. She meant the one on the right. Uh, feels like fresh ghost. I also really love these, Frank. That's from Jennifer Evans. Oh, thanks, Jen. Your watercolors are a hit. <laughs> yeah. Well, new work, you know. I know. <laughs> we keep making work and, uh, you know, it's always, um, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm sure you guys feel the same way, but it's, I, I'm always grateful to make work. That's all, you know. So. Okay. And, and when I, when I someday, uh, you know, when, you know, it's funny, works on paper are, are a whole different thing sometimes, but you know, that's a, another discussion, but thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Real honor. Thank you.